Now, I'm really pleased to say we're going to catch up with someone we met on breakfast 18 months ago. Jason Liversidge has motor neurone disease and he was gradually losing his ability to speak. And he came in to tell us how he would soon need to rely on a computerised talking system. And he was recording his own words and phrases in his own voice so that his new synthetic voice sounds as much like him as possible. So this was him talking to us in June 2015 and pay particular attention to his voice. It'll be a synthetic voice, so it will be as near to mine as they can get. Obviously, at the moment, we're unsure as to how close that will actually be. What does that mean to you? That it'll be your, you know, your voice or close to it, rather than it being, you know, a, a sort of a computerised thing. Um, it, it means a lot in the sense that obviously the girls um, wouldn't understand another voice. Um, for example, if they use the same voice as Professor Hawkins, um, it would be totally. Unreal for them, so for them to hear my voice will be um, will be great. That was Jason. Uh, now he has his voice pad, and he's here with all the family uh, once again to reveal how it sounds. And I should tell our viewers, Jason, that uh, some of your friends and closest members of your family have not heard this machine and how it sounds. So why don't you give us a whirl? Uh, good morning to you and thanks for coming on the programme. Good morning, Christian. Thanks for having us on the show today. That is amazing, Liz. That, I mean, it does, it sounds just like him. T tell us a little bit about what happened. How did you, how did you get to go on this, this sort of research programme to record Jason's voice? Well, obviously, when Jason was diagnosed with motor neuron disease in 2013, we did lots of research and we knew that 90% of people with motor neuron disease lose the ability to speak. Um, most people with motor neuron disease have a very computerised... Just a moment, darling, just a moment. Most people with motor neuron disease, like Stephen Hawking, have a very computerised, yes. robotic-sounding voice. And it's quite synthesised, isn't it, It is it, very synthesised, although that is now synonymous with Stephen Hawking's. Um, uh, but we didn't want that for Jason. And right. it was purely by accident that I came across a, a tweet about the um, Anne Rowling Clinic in Edinburgh were doing these um, voice banking trials. Um, so we got in touch and they agreed for Jason to go and bank his voice. How, do, how big a difference do you think it'll make to you, Jason? This voice will make a world of difference as it is me, I know it is me, and therefore a daily reminder of what I sounded like. Yeah, and, it, and it's important as well, of course, to Lily and Poppy, who are doing some amazing drawing here on the desk. Um, but it's great that they can hear Dad. Absolutely, because obviously for Lily and Poppy, they are very young, they're only three and five. And although they know Daddy is poorly and the doctors can't make him better, they don't know what the future holds. Yeah. They don't realise that Jason will eventually lose the ability to talk. Right. So I think for them it's really, really important that they're able to continue to hear the Daddy in, in his own voice. And how important, Jason, was it for you to bank these words? And how difficult was it to find people who sounded like you as well? Yeah. Is your co so you have to program this computer while, while you're looking yeah, for, for the words, because it's a sort of predictive kind of program, isn't it, that, that you can... Yeah, I've, I've pre-done the answers, but I have to program them in. Yeah, so you're still learning how to use it at the moment, are you? Yeah. It's that new. So here we go, it should yeah. work now. Is it coming? It was really important that I banked my own voice and when I did it for several reasons, my voice had to be largely intact. Also banking voice donors from similar sounding males was equally as important to have the best chance of getting my voice. This voice means so much to me as it is me and not a pre-programmed voice that could really be anyone. It is, and it's incredible because the accent is there. I can pick up the accent that we just heard before. Uh, was it important to get a Yorkshire accent, basically. Where did you go to get the words? Well, actually, we did an appeal on local television and radio and in the local newspapers and social media last year, and lots of um, donors came forward, and oh, they travelled to Edinburgh at their own expense to go and donate their voice to create a synthesised computer voice for Jason. Yeah. So what does it sound like, girls, to hear Daddy? Lily? Lily. What does it sound like to hear your Daddy? What do you think it sounds like to hear Daddy's voice? Does it sound like Daddy? Is it good to hear him? Is it important to hear him? It yeah. is, isn't it? What do you think, Poppy? 
Do you like Daddy's new voice? You do yes. like Daddy's voice, and that's crucially important. It's obviously important to you, Jason, that you can communicate with them how you used to communicate with them. Last time we did some drawing, you did Yeah. Okay. It's See. amazing to now know that my girl's Lily and Poppy. My wife Liz will still be able to talk to me and hear my voice back, especially Lily and Poppy, as they only know my voice now, not as it used to be. Yeah, and and I mean, motor neuron disease. We know it, it can it can be devastating for families. How, how has it affected Jason? I mean, you obviously see how it's affecting him, and it's been a year since he came on the programme. So so what's it's, it been like? It's actually been more or less eighteen months, and I think last time Jason came on, he was walking, and um, he was obviously his mobility was much better. Now Jason's unable to walk. Mm. Um, he's only able to stand for a few seconds, and he needs help with everything from washing, dressing, feeding absolutely everything so you know it's a devastating diagnosis mm. yeah. um, and last year you put out this appeal to find these these voice donors um, I mean, it's an extraordinary thing to, to, to be able to digitize the way that that people talk were you surprised by the way that that people responded to the appeal you put out yeah, it's coming yeah. it's coming is it there we go. It's interesting because our viewers can't see the screen, but he's, I mean, he, there's a lot of programming going on without movement of hands. How does that work? Here comes, here comes your answer. Yes, we did an appeal for voice donors through friends and my old school website. The response was great. People older and younger volunteered to go to Edinburgh and support me, which has blown me away. How is Jason controlling this computer then? Does it? So it actually works by infrared. So the infrared is tracking Jason's eye movements, and you can't, the viewers can't see it, but the computer has a keypad on, and Jason needs to look at each individual letter right. and spell out a word, and then press the speak but speech button with his eyes, and then it will yeah. speak the sentence. But he's doing it brilliantly well. I mean, he's only had this what a week. Yeah, he's had this computer a week. So it's um, taken a bit of getting used to. Yeah. So that's different as well, because Stephen Hawking had a, a thing on his cheek, didn't he? He controls it with muscle movement. I think Stephen Hawking controls it with muscle movement, maybe because his eyes are not strong enough to um, control it via infrared. Right. OK. Uh, and Jason, um, you were diagnosed with motor neuron disease in 2013. How difficult has it been for you to deal with the condition? First of all, didn't believe it. It's like your whole life flashes before you. I think it took about three weeks to get my head around it. I'll be honest, I think I have dealt with it really well. The way I have always seen it is the glass is half empty. I think you do with it unbelievably well. I'm so impressed with how you deal with the computer. It's really good of you all uh, to come in and talk to us today and to have Lizzie at Lily and Poppy during these pictures here. You've been very well behaved. Very well behaved indeed. Uh, Jason's story incidentally is on Inside Out in Yorkshire and Lincolnshire tomorrow evening at 7.30 on BBC One or you can catch it on the BBC iPlayer. Uh, that's all from us. Dan and Louise are back tomorrow and we'll have details of a special BBC News Week looking at issues affecting the NHS. Thank you from all of us. Goodbye for now.